Now, I imagine most of you watching will have not only completed The Witcher 3, but also its first DLC, Hearts of Stone. In Hearts of Stone, there is a character known as Gaunter Odin. Some like to say that he's the main antagonist or villain of this DLC, but I disagree with this, to an extent, as other than at the end of the DLC, Geralt is not fighting against Gaunter at all, and you even have the choice whether to be on his side or another character's Olgeard. So, recently I was deciding what video to make, and I decided that making a video discussing this character's purpose or his function in the Witch universe would be quite fun. So, let's get into it. To approach this subject, I must first explain some of the various events and contracts that Gaunter has had over the years. And then I will go into as much depth as I can as to why Gaunter decided to make contracts with these people, then I will discuss how this relates to his purpose. The first, and most likely the most memorable one for you, is the contract Gaunter made with Olgierd von Everek. The terms of this contract are as follows. Olgierd first wanted to have his fortune restored, as in the events prior to the events in Hearts of Stone, Olgierd's family had fallen on hard times, despite the fact that they were once rich. He wanted this fortune restored. And on top of wanting this fortune restored, Olgierd wanted immortality. Now this is a contract, so Gaunter demanded something in return. In Olgierd's case, it was the life of one of his loved ones, his brother Vladimir, or his lover Iris. Olgierd agreed to let his brother be killed and the bargain was struck. Another tenant of the bargain was that Olgierd's soul would eventually go to Gaunter Odim, but for that to happen, Odim must first complete three more wishes for him, and then they must stand on the moon together. You see Olgierd was quite arrogant and he just assumed Gaunter would never be able to get them to stand on the moon together, or on top of that complete three of his wishes. Now something you must note about the bargains with Odim is that he grants people's wishes not what they want. And the best way for me to explain this to you is to explain how he answered Olgierd's wishes. For Olgierd's first wish, he wanted his fortunes restored, so Gaunter put into motion a chain of events that resulted in Iris's parents presenting Olgierd with banknotes so he could clear his family's debts. This harmed Olgierd's pride and he refused. So technically, the wish was fulfilled, but it wasn't in the way that Olgierd wanted. And for Olgierd's second wish, to be immortal, Gaunter turned his heart to stone. Slowly, Olgierd lost all empathy and emotion, until finally he no longer felt love towards Iris. And in the end, Gaunter used Geralt as a way to fulfil Olgierd's three other wishes, and then tricked Olgierd into standing on a depiction of the moon with him. From there, Geralt can either let Olgierd die, or he can beat Gaunter in a game of wits. So that's the basic rundown of Olgierd's contract with Gaunter. Now for another event. The next event that we know of is between Gaunter and the Professor Premathine Shakeslock. Premathine was an expert in black magic, so when Olgierd paid him a handsome fee to discover the identity of Gaunter Odim, he gladly accepted. Premathine went all around the continent to discover information about Odim, and finally discovered some key information in Nilfgaard. Whilst in Nilfgaard, he went blind, deciphering ancient scrawlings, where he learned a variety of information about Odim. After returning home, Gaunter approached him and drew a runic circle around him, as a way of repaying him for taking such an interest in him. Shakeslock was to remain in the runic circle, and then he would be safe whilst within the circle, but should he leave, he would die. The circle caused mental damage along with dreams and visions. Primathine left the circle during the events of Hearts of Stone and is now dead. The final event that we know of is not an event where Gaunter is named directly, but it is heavily implied that it is him. So there was a woman known as Marlena. She was very beautiful and the heiress to the Trasdemara estate. One day, a beggar came to her door with a wooden bowl and spoon. This is an ancient custom. She refused the beggar and stated that she would rather that the leftovers go to her dogs than the beggar. At this point, the beggar broke his spoon and cast a curse, stating that as she was beautiful, she would never be able to look at herself in the mirror again. He also stated that since she loved feasts, no one would ever want to sit and dine with her. Finally, as she had even refused to give him the crumbs from her table, he swore that she would never find a spoon that would state her hunger. Now I know this may be confusing to you all, as you may be thinking, surely Gaunter can only act within the terms of a contract, because if he can act outside of one, why would he go through all the trouble with Olgierd to begin with? To that, I say that Gaunter has already shown us that he is perfectly willing and able to kill innocents not on a contract with him, such as when he pushed that spoon through that man's eye in the Hearts of Stone DLC. He obviously also had the whole event with Shakeslock, proving that he can do things of his own will. 
I mean, personally, I don't think Gaunter is actually bound by anything, or at least what we see of him in The Witcher 3 is not truly what he is able to do and can do. I think for him, all of this is a game, and if he were to simply do everything to the full extent of his power, it would be boring. As Primathine stated in the Hearts of Stone DLC, Gaunter thrives on contracts above all else, twisting his victims into madness through seemingly harmless contracts. So, now you understand the events surrounding Gaunter Odim, we can begin to determine his purpose. To begin with, Shakeslock states to us, the player, that Gaunter is evil incarnate, and that signing a contract with Gaunter, or playing with evil, will result in nothing but sadness. In two of the examples above, being cruel or bad in some way is a recurring theme with the people Gaunter has contracts or negative interactions with. So to me, it almost seems as if Gaunter's actions seem like a way of giving these characters their punishment. For example, Olgird, before meeting Odim, was not a very nice individual. He would plunder nearby villages and easily kill local citizens. He was also a very arrogant individual. Then a variety of unfortunate events befell him and he signed a contract with Odim that only deepened his misery. I personally believe that it is entirely possible Gaunter caused the events that caused Olgird to sign a contract, as this was Gaunter's way of punishing him. And next we have Marlena, who was also quite arrogant and cruel. She was also punished by a beggar, who as I said before was most likely Odim. From all of this, we can assume that Gaunter's purpose is to deal punishment to those who deserve it, but who would not receive the punishment through normal means. Now there is one outlier to this theory, that outlier being Shakeslock. Shakeslock was simply an expert in the occult. He never seemingly did anything bad, but Gaunter still punished him. In the games, we find out that Gaunter punished this man because he found out too much about him. Now, this does not necessarily mean that my theory is incorrect. If anything, it just adds another layer to it. Because perhaps, as Shakeslock said himself, if you play with evil, medicine can be harder to find. Shakeslock played with evil. He allowed himself to be noticed by Gaunter, and not only that, he involved himself in Gaunter's affairs. Perhaps by knowingly seeking information on him, this allowed Gaunter to act. So, to summarise, I believe that Gaunter's purpose is to act as a reaction to the bad. Now, this does not necessarily make Gaunter a good person. Gaunter clearly enjoys contracts and driving people to madness, but just because he enjoys it doesn't mean that he is able to act on everybody. I mean, as we know, Geralt already met Gaunter at the start of The Witcher 3, and Gaunter didn't try and offer Geralt a contract. Perhaps this was because he could see that Geralt was good of heart, unlike Olgird, and cannot be corrupted further by evil. I'd like to say one final thing about Gaunter, as he is referenced as the evil incarnate. For me personally, I'm not entirely sure that he is. He does do evil things, but only to bad people. The only times we know of that he's seemingly done something to a good person is when that good person meddled in his affairs. Other than that, he never really seemed to do anything particularly bad to anybody. I mean, if you want to reference the wooden spoon guy again, he was actually being rude at the time. And granted, Gaunter's reaction was an incredible overreaction reaction to that guy being rude, but you could say that every single reaction Gaunt has had to all these bad people is a bit of an overreaction as well. Perhaps that's just the way he deals with things. Another final point I would like to make is how his purpose could be related to his other nickname, Master Mirror. Now, I think the connotations surrounding this name are very interesting. If you look at his actions, everything he does in his contracts acts as if he is holding up a mirror to people he has the contract with. For example, Olgird wanted money and immortality, and also wanted to be with Iris. Gaunter held up a mirror to him, that mirror being reality, and he showed him that in reality, things do not always go your way, and by wanting to achieve these goals through unethical means, it will always leave you in a worse position, be that mentally or physically. So Gaunter does twist his victims, but in a way, he also shows them the truth. That not everything can go your way, and there is no easy, cheaty way to just get to the top. You have to work for it and achieve your goal with your own merits. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed. I want to make some more videos on Gaunter in the future. Perhaps some more theories on where he's come from, what he is, what he could be, and all the rest. I feel like today's video has been interesting for me to do though, and I feel like most of you out there may have a better understanding of his purpose, 
or at least with the information I've presented you with, you can try and draw your own conclusions. But anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. As always guys, these videos took me a long time to do, this one especially, so I'd really appreciate you liking the video, as it really does help me out, and also put suggestions down in the comments down below. If you have any questions about characters, about events in the Witch universe, about anything to do with it that you just are confused about or want to know more about, feel free to put it down below and I'll probably make a video on it. Also, if this is the first video you're finding on my channel, I do Witcher lore every few days amongst other videos, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of those videos. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, I put the videos on there whenever they come out amongst other stuff, so be sure to go and follow me on there. And also be sure to follow me on Twitch, I'll get back to doing some more games on there soon, so if you want to make sure you don't miss those streams, be sure to follow me on there. Also be sure to join the Discord and Reddit, I'm pretty sure you know why, they're all used just for talking or posting stuff you like. So they're all down in the description. Finally guys, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges, you guys are honestly amazing, thank you all so much, you help make these videos, I just want to say thank you all so much, you're, you're all amazing, it's, it's just very very calm what you do. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week!